Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. In the last episode of this particular project, the San Mai Damascus Bushcraft Blade, we forged this billet, and that was done by combining over 140 layers of 1075 and 15N20 sawmill blade steel, and then sandwiching several pieces of 52100 bearing steel between those, forge welding all together, do a nice solid billet, and now it is time to make this into a knife. Make sure that you check out part one somewhere up here. Typically on a sand my billet type blade, there's minimal to no forging of the bevel. And that is because to reveal the pattern of all the layers that you've combined, you need to be able to grind through those as you're grinding in the bevel. And if you forge that bevel, that negates some or most of that. So what we need here is a design for a seven inch, seven inch bushcraft knife. And on this particular one, I did taper this end a little bit for the tang, so we have to make sure that we put that there, but other than that, we're, uh, we're just gonna make a nice drop point style blade. This is actually an order, this is actually a uh, client, client order, so we're gonna follow some, some uh, general design guidelines, and that looks pretty bad. You know, I, I really like uh, sort of grinding the shape out better than actually drawing it, but that's just me. The important thing here really is to make sure that we have the proper dimensions. And so we'll come back off of the uh, end of the billet slightly. We've, I've already cleaned this up, but just to make sure that there's no kind of D-lambs or anything like that, which is not uncommon for the ends and edges of a billet. So we've got a seven inch blade here, and then we'll come back here about three eighths of an inch that's going to be our actual start of the handle so that we have a nice, uh, well, a short ricasso. I'm not a big fan of long ricassos on, on knives that are in, you know, used for bushcraft and so forth. So let's uh, take this to the grinder and start removing some material. All right, so I've got the shape profiled. There is extra material here, which is important so we can grind off any decarburized steel after our heat treat processes. And we've got holes drilled in the tang. And the next thing I'm gonna do is remove this scale and we will do a real rough grind on it, leaving plenty of extra material, but we just don't need this much on there. Okay, so we have a very thick grind. It's still 3 16 inch thick here at the edge. And, uh, you know, just cleaned up. The main purpose here is to flatten things out and remove sort of the wavy forging surface so that when we're normalizing this, it's going to be stress relieved uh, in a uniform fashion so that we're not stress relieving sort of a lumpy, uneven piece of steel. And then from here, you know, we'll be able to take this uh, 
take these surfaces down on the finish grind and everything should still be uniform in, in, in uh, you know, inside the steel. So that's sort of the idea. And the next thing is to go ahead and put this in the kiln and heat it up. So at this point, this uh, blade is fully heat treated and the next thing to do is grind it down and finish the blade. So we put it through a normalizing cycle and three more thermocycles for grain refinement and then of course hardening and tempering and you can kind of see the pattern showing up a little bit here. Obviously it'll be a lot more once we finish it so let's take it over to the grinder. So we've got the blade finished ground and close to final dimensions. Of course we still have to hand sand and then etch it. So quite a bit of work to do still. And I'm gonna i I'm gonna I'm gonna enlist Justin to help us. Justin, you wanna do some hand sanding? Sure thing. See? That's perfect. Alright, we'll bring it over there. All right, there it is, all hand sanded up. Got our logo in there. Justin helped us with this, got it finished up here. Now it's time to put this in the etch and see what all the fuss, all the muss is all about. What do we have? So while that's etching and in and out of the etching bath several times, I gotta work on hanging these hatchets, these throwing hatchets that we rescued from the pit of despair. But anyway, got to get these all ready to go so people can throw them at chunks of wood and things. Alright, look at that. First etch cycle here. We'll do several more to get some... Already got a little bit of depth, but not much. So, there we go. Looking pretty good. Got it cleaned off with uh, some thousand grit paper. And uh, we'll keep going. All right, we can finally put a handle on this knife. And for that, my client uh, chose desert ironwood. So I've got a block of desert ironwood here that we need to turn into handle scales. So let's do that next. All right, we've got our handle scales attached with loveless bolts, they're called, and epoxy. Just needs to, just need to let this cure for most of the day, and then hopefully we can come back today and shape this handle, but we're really close to being finished on this knife.
And we are done. That's another bladesmithing project in the books. Thanks for sticking around and uh, joining me on this project. I'll show you some close-up photos in just a second here. So stay tuned. But thanks for watching, as always, and we will see you on the next video.